This is Tennessee in 10. Headlines and weather from around the state in less than 10 minutes. Good morning, I'm Whitney Turner in the WVLT newsroom. A manhunt is underway as multiple agencies search for a murder suspect. Take a look at your screen. 66-year-old David Kite Moore is the suspect in a reported shooting on Basinger Road in Cock County. One person was found dead from a gunshot wound. Yesterday morning, a SWAT team was activated to find Moore, but did not find him at his home. The Cock County Sheriff tells us Moore is considered to be armed and dangerous. If you see him, call 911. Five Union County inmates are back in custody this morning after escaping the jail overnight. The sheriff's office there tells us they escaped around 1030 last night. Two were arrested near the jail. The Union County K-9 team tracked down the other three inmates around a half a mile away. All inmates were back in custody an hour and 16 minutes after this escape. The sheriff's office says the escape happened partly due to overcrowding in the jail, where women are being housed in the hallway outside of the facility housing units. A security door that leads directly outside the jail failed to lock after being closed. That door has been checked and is now operating properly. In Knoxville, city officials came together to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice yesterday with the unveiling of the Gold Star Memorial. It honors the families of service members who were killed in battle. The new Gold Star Memorial joins the Blue Star Memorial, which is a tribute to the armed forces who serve the country. The families say memorials like this are a way to keep their fallen military members alive and continue to honor them. Never forget those names. As long as someone is speaking your name, you are alive. And these are some of the programs that we need to support. This is the fourth Gold Star Memorial in the state of Tennessee. In the WVLT newsroom, those are your top headlines around East Tennessee. Here are some stories we are following in the Mid-South. The mother of Jalen McKenzie says she is still looking for answers about her son's death. Last week, the Shelby County District Attorney's Office released body camera footage from the shooting. Memphis police say there was an exchange of gunfire between McKenzie and officers during a foot chase. Saturday, she said MPD is not being transparent about her case and other investigations. I just want to know what happened to my son. I'm not asking for a lot. I think that this is not, you're not doing me a favor to tell me what the truth is. Your job is to tell me what happened to my son. McKenzie says she'll keep pushing for more information. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation is still investigating this case. And the investigation continues into a deadly fire at a midtown high rise. The fire happened at Brighton Towers on Poplar Avenue near North Claybrook on Friday afternoon. Two people were killed in the electrical fire. Fire officials have since ruled the fire accidental. And in a new court fouling, Sean and Leanne Tui say they never intended to adopt Michael Orr. The court documents also say the Tuies deny making money off of his name. The response comes, comes from the Memphis couple after Orr's request for a judge to end a conservatorship signed in 2004 when he was just 18 years old. Orr accuses them of lying to him by having him sign papers making them his conservators rather than his adoptive parents nearly two decades ago. Those are your headlines from the Mid-South. Well, good morning. I'm Amanda Hara at WSMB in Nashville. Tennessee is celebrating a Titans win, but the Titans are celebrating five police officers. The Metro Nashville police officers ran towards gunfire to save lives on the day of the Covenant School shooting. And before yesterday's game against the Chargers, they planted the Titans sword right there before kickoff. Earlier this year, the Titans organization donated $100,000 to the Caring for Covenant Fund. A state representative is fighting for gun control, not just in Tennessee, but now he says across the country. Justin Jones spent the weekend at a gun control rally in Raleigh after two gun scares at the University of North Carolina just in the past two weeks. Three weeks ago, a graduate student is accused of shooting and killing his professor. And a few days ago, police say that an armed man pulled a gun on an employee at a campus cafe, though he never fired any shots. Um, we had a shooting in Nashville at a um, private elementary school. There's a shooting here at a um, college campus. There's a shooting in Jacksonville at a Dollar General. We're seeing this pattern and continue to play out, and we need to break this cycle of, of, of mass shootings. 
Jones, of course, one of the so-called Tennessee Three who was expelled from the House after a gun protest on the House floor. He was just reelected to his seat. A mid-state teenager who battled cancer had her wish come true. Look at that big smile on her face. That's 15-year-old Briley. She's wanted a Highland cow for a pretty long time. And look at that. Tractor Supply and Make-A-Wish teamed up to surprise her. When Briley and her family got home, her new cow was there waiting for her with that big blue ribbon around his neck. I was not thinking that I would qualify for Make-A-Wish. And then whenever they told us that I did, I was like, I don't know what to wish for. And so I kind of just was like, a cow, a Highland cow. <laughs> and I was like, that was oh, like a goofy one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Those Highland cows are so cute. Riley named her new cow Homer, and we're also happy to say that she is in remission. All right, some more good news coming for you weather-wise. Stefano joining us with a look at the forecast across the state. And Stefano, you're saying most of us have pretty good weather this week. I mean, yeah, pretty much the entire week. There'll be plenty of sunshine, a little bit of a warm-up we're going to talk about, but a warm-up that's not going to come with a big increase in the humidity. A lot of us woke up to patchy but dense fog this morning as we continue through the rest of today. We're getting back in the 70s and 80s. It should be more of an elevation situation in at least some spots. So Nashville will be near 80, Memphis at 82. A lot of 70s on the board, though, from Cookville, Knoxville, down through Chattanooga, out near Jackson as well. Overnight tonight, a few clouds will mix in, some patchy fog again for tomorrow morning. We'll all wake up mostly in the 50s with the exception of Memphis right around that 60 mark. So certainly a cool start. Afternoon looks great. Plenty of sunshine again. 70s end into the lower 80s and expect temperatures in the lower to mid 80s the rest of the week and the sunshine and dry weather sticking with us, Amanda. All right, Stefano, thanks. Thanks for joining us for Tennessee in 10 in Nashville. I'm Amanda Hara. Have a great day and a great rest of your week. This is Tennessee in 10. Headlines and weather from around the state in less than 10 minutes.